Ever wondered what happens to your body after taking creatine for 30 days? Today, we're going to explore this curious question. We will delve into the realm of creatine, a naturally occurring substance in our bodies, and its effects when taken as a supplement. We'll answer questions like, how does creatine work? Where does it go? What are the benefits and side effects? And most importantly, is it safe? So let's dive in and discover the science behind creatine. So, what exactly is creatine? It's a natural substance our bodies produce to give our muscles a quick and powerful source of energy. It's like the battery pack of our muscles, especially during high intensity activities. Most of this energy booster, about 95%, is stored right where it's needed most, in our muscles. The remaining 5% takes up residence in the brain, providing a similar energy support role. Now, what's fascinating about creatine is that we can also get it from certain foods, like meat and fish, or even from supplements. These supplements can boost our creatine levels by approximately 30%, giving our muscles even more energy to work with. This can potentially lead to increased strength and muscle mass over time. But remember, not everyone will experience these benefits due to natural variations in muscle creatine levels. Now that we know what creatine is, let's find out how it works in the body. Creatine works as an indirect energy source for our muscles. Produced naturally by our bodies, it serves as a sort of reserve power station for high intensity activities. 95% of our creatine is stored in our muscles, with the remaining 5% in our brain. When we supplement with creatine, we can increase our baseline levels by approximately 30%. This means our muscles have more creatine to draw from, resulting in increased strength and muscle mass over time. However, this doesn't apply to everyone. Around 20 to 30% of individuals have naturally high levels of muscle creatine. For these folks, supplementing with creatine might not provide noticeable benefits. It's like having a full tank of gas and trying to fill it up even more. There's simply no room. The process of creatine supplementation is not instantaneous. Think of it like soaking a sponge in water. It takes time for your muscles to become fully saturated with the extra creatine. The duration of this loading phase depends on your daily creatine intake. Using a loading method, where you take a larger dose initially, it could take about a week to fully saturate your muscles. Alternatively, you could opt for a more gradual approach, taking a standard dose daily. This method might take two to three weeks to reach full saturation. Regardless of the method, the destination is the same, a muscle tank full of creatine, ready to propel you to new heights of strength and muscle mass. However, the journey might differ in terms of side effects experienced, such as water retention or stomach discomfort. But don't worry, we'll delve into these in a bit more detail later. But before we see the benefits, our muscles need to be fully saturated with creatine. Let's find out how this happens. Saturation of muscles with creatine is a gradual process. You see, our bodies can only absorb so much creatine at once, which is why we can't just gulp down a month's worth of creatine in a single day and expect to see immediate results. Instead, we have to patiently wait as our bodies slowly but surely soak up the creatine we're ingesting. So, how do we go about achieving this magical state of creatine saturation? Well, there are two main methods. The first is the loading method, which involves taking a large dose of creatine each day for about a week. This is kind of like filling up a bathtub with a fire hose. It's a lot of water all at once, and the tub gets full pretty quickly. The second method is a bit more subtle. It's called the baseline dose method, and it involves taking a smaller dose of creatine each day over a longer period of time, usually around two to three weeks. This method is like filling up that same bathtub with a garden hose. It's a slower, more gradual process, but the end result is the same. A tub full of water, or in our case, muscles full of creatine. Now you may be wondering, if both methods achieve the same result, why would anyone choose the slower method? Well, the answer is that the loading method, despite its speed, can sometimes lead to some unpleasant side effects like water retention and stomach discomfort. These side effects can be minimized by splitting your daily creatine dose into smaller portions taken throughout the day, or by avoiding taking creatine on an empty stomach or with caffeine. The baseline dose method, on the other hand, is a bit gentler on the body and is less likely to cause these side effects. So if you're looking for a more comfortable ride to Creatine City, the baseline dose method might be the way to go. However, the saturation phase may come with some side effects. Let's talk about them. Like any supplement, creatine may have some side effects. 
It's important to be informed about these so you can recognize them and know how to address them if they arise. Now, let's dive into what these side effects might be. First off, one of the most common side effects reported is water retention. This is because creatine pulls water into your muscle cells, which can lead to a slight increase in body weight. Don't be alarmed though. This effect is temporary and often diminishes as your body adjusts to the supplement. And remember, a little water weight can actually be a sign that the creatine is doing its job. Next up, some people report stomach discomfort after taking creatine. This could be anything from mild bloating to more severe cramping. If you're experiencing this, try splitting your daily dose into smaller portions spread out over the day. This can help your body acclimate to the supplement more gradually. Also, steer clear of taking creatine on an empty stomach or with caffeine, as these scenarios seem to heighten the chance of an upset tummy. Finally, let's talk about creatinine levels. Creatinine is a waste product that your body produces when it breaks down creatine. When you're supplementing with creatine, your creatinine levels will naturally rise. Now, high creatinine levels can sometimes be a red flag for kidney problems, so this might seem alarming. However, rest assured that this increase is expected when taking creatine, and it doesn't mean your kidneys are at risk. Just be sure to inform your healthcare provider that you're taking creatine so they can interpret your blood tests correctly. Now, these side effects might sound a bit daunting, but remember, they're usually mild and often subside as your body gets used to the supplement. And of course, the potential benefits of creatine, which we'll explore next, often outweigh these temporary discomforts. Now that we know about the side effects, let's move on to the benefits of creatine. After the saturation phase, you can start to experience the benefits of creatine. So, what can you expect? One of the most significant advantages of creatine supplementation is increased strength. As your muscles become fully saturated with creatine, they have more fuel to power through high intensity activities. This means you can push harder, lift heavier, and ultimately get stronger. You might notice that you're able to add a few extra reps to your workout, or even bump up the weight on your barbell. And while these might seem like small victories, remember, it's those incremental gains that really add up over time. But the benefits of creatine don't stop at just strength gains. Many people also report faster recovery times after their workouts. This is crucial, as proper recovery is just as important as the workout itself when it comes to building muscle and improving performance. Less time feeling sore means more time being able to train effectively so you can get back in the gym quicker and continue working towards your fitness goals. In fact, these claims aren't just anecdotal. A study surveying 52 NCAA athletes found that 81% reported faster recovery from their training as one of the benefits of creatine supplementation. This is a significant majority, lending strong support to the idea that creatine can indeed help speed up recovery times. In addition to improved performance and recovery, creatine may also confer cognitive benefits. Remember, a small percentage of creatine is stored in the brain, and some research suggests it might enhance cognitive function, although more studies are needed in this area to fully understand this potential benefit. So, that's what happens to your body after taking creatine for 30 days. You can expect to see increased strength, faster recovery, and potentially enhanced cognitive function. But as with any supplement, it's important to remember that results can vary from person to person, and what works for one might not work for another. And of course, always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new supplement regimen. Let's quickly recap what we've learned today. Creatine, a natural substance in our bodies, powers our muscles and aids in high intensity activities. Supplementing with creatine can elevate baseline levels, potentially leading to increased strength and muscle mass. However, the body needs time to saturate with additional creatine and this process might cause temporary side effects, such as water retention or stomach discomfort. Despite a slight rise in creatinine levels, creatine is generally safe and can enhance recovery. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more informative and educational videos.